Hi guys, my name is Nikki. You might recognize me from Gramercy Books where I am a bookseller. I have been since the doors opened about six years ago. I'm also their digital media manager, which means that I work on the newsletters, I work on the social media, uh, I send the emails, I, I do a little bit of everything. So you've probably gotten emails or seen some of the things I've done before. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm starting a new series today called Gramercy Show and Tell where we'll have different people who work at Gramercy Books take you home and show you their bookshelves. I think it's a fun way to get to know us. Um, I figured I would start because I don't actually have very many books on my bookshelf, which seems kind of counterintuitive for a bookseller, but I've always been someone who, I really only keep books that I really, really love that I want to reread again. And um, I end up just kind of giving them to other people to read or donating them. Um, so if, what I'm gonna show you on my shelf are the things that I really love. I'm just gonna start at the, the top corner here. These are actually all advanced reader copies. We got sent them from publishers. They're books that haven't come out yet. Um, and publishers send books to bookstores and booksellers in the hopes that they'll read them, they'll love them, they'll recommend them when they do come out. So um, I'm just gonna show you some of the advanced reader copies that I have that I'm very excited about. The first one is Emily Henry's Happy Place. This book comes out, I believe, April 25th, but if you know anything about romance, you'll know the name Emily Henry. She wrote Book Lovers, she wrote Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation. This is her newest one. Everyone's wanting to read this one. I think I'm gonna start it next week. Another art that I'm very excited about and very happy to have is You Can Make This Place Beautiful by Maggie Smith. Maggie is actually a Bexley resident and um, we love her. I love her. I adore her work. I adore her as a person. Number one Maggie Smith fan. I'll get shirts made one day. Um, but this is her new memoir. It is coming out April 11th, I believe. And we have an event with her April 17th at the Drexel to launch this book. So if you're interested in that, we would love to get this copy signed for you, send it to you online, or if you want to come to the event, tickets are on Eventbrite. I'll put links down below. Um, another couple things I'm excited about that are coming out. Immortal Longings, I think, sounds really good. Chloe Gong is actually usually a YA author. This is her adult, adult fantasy debut, and the way that they pegged it, which kind of sold it for me, was that it was a, a fantasy Antony and Cleopatra retelling, so really looking forward to this one. This one doesn't come out until, ooh, July 25th, quite a while to wait for this one. Um, I try to put them in chronological order from when they come out on this little shelf here. That way I know what's coming out sooner. Hopefully I can read it so that I'm ready to recommend it when it comes out. Um, I read a little bit of everything. Uh, mainly though, lately I've been liking romance since the pandemic, like a lot of people. I also read a lot of mysteries and thrillers, a little bit of literary fiction, but mainly I stay towards like contemporary fiction, literary, or contemporary fiction, mysteries, thrillers, romance, kind of in that area. Um, this, these little section right here are actually my books that I share with my friend Maddie. We have very similar reading taste. So these are just a couple of books that she loaned me. She loaned me uh, A Certain Hunger, which is about a food critic who suddenly decides that she wants to start eating all of her boyfriends. Super fun, right? Sounds like a good time. And I love Carmen Maria Machado. Um, uh, this is her memoir. It reads like a psychological suspense thriller, even though it's a memoir. She really pushes the boundaries of genre and form of writing. Really loved her short story collection, Her Body and Other Parties. So hopefully I'll have time to read this one. Um, I tend to read mainly newer books, to be honest with you. As a bookseller, it's kind of important to know what's coming out, what's popular right now, so that I can give very timely recommendations to people. So I would say about 90% of what I read is new books or recently released or going to be released soon books. Um, this is George, by the way. No men were harmed in the making of this Halloween decoration. <laughs> um, moving down here, I have one of my favorite self-help books, actually. You know how Miley right now is all about, you can buy yourself flowers. Well, you can buy yourself the lilies. This is a book by Tara Schuster. Um, it's a self-help book. We put it in the psychology section and I just stumbled upon it one day in the store when I was working. And it really helped me at a time in my life when I needed to learn a lot about self-awareness, self-love, self-everything, self-improvement. So this was an absolutely amazing book. I recommend it to anyone who's going through a hard time trying to find themselves going through a big life change. Great one. And we'll always, you can see my little flags. It'll always be on my bookshelf. Uh, you'll see a couple of Jennifer Egan books on my shelf. I have, um, 
three Jennifer Egan books. I have the very popular A Visit from the Goon Squad, which won the Pulitzer Prize. It's interconnecting stories, kind of all focused on the central theme of like music, but it's really, really interesting. If you like a book that has very well thought out characters that all kind of connect and weave together. Um, the sibling novel for Visit from the Goon Squad, which just came out last year actually, is The Candy House, which was similar because it is also interconnected stories. Um, but these ones kind of center around the theme of like technology, like how far is too far? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? You know, very Black Mirror-esque. I loved this book. And then I have one of her books, Look at Me, which is one of her like books from maybe two decades ago. I haven't read it yet. It sounded good though. So Jennifer Egan put her back. Um, other things you'll see on my shelf is as you, as you can see, um, I do have two Taylor Jenkins Reid novels on my shelf. I, the first book I read from Taylor Jenkins Reid was Daisy Jones and the Six, which is actually getting really popular right now because of the series on Amazon Prime, which I haven't watched yet. I'm planning to watch it Tuesday. Um, but this is the book, the OG, um, I read this in probably 24 hours. Absolutely loved it. Almost Famous is my favorite movie, and I adore classic rock. I love Fleetwood Mac. I love Janis Joplin. I love all those things. So when I read this, it really, really resonated with me. And it's told kind of in the style of like a VH1 behind the music in interviews. Love it. Can't wait to watch the show. Love Taylor Jenkins Reid. Another thing by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I have is Carrie Soto is Back. Um, which is one that I actually wasn't super sure I was going to like because I don't really care about tennis. I'm not an athletic person. Uh, the, the fact that it was about tennis put me off, to be honest with you. But by about a third way through the book, did I care about tennis? Did I care about tennis? Uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid just has a really, really profound way of making strong female characters that you just like uh, rooting for them. So love this one. Um, Another author that you see a couple things from, I have a couple of Brett Easton Ellis novels. I went through a really big Brett Easton Ellis phase like a decade ago and I did, they're just still on my shelf. So I have American Psycho, The Informer is Less Than Zero, Rules of Attraction, you know, disillusioned, disillusioned youth in LA in the 90s or whatever. Um, I also really love the original book, Fight Club. I know, I know, we're not supposed to talk about it. Everyone's seen the movie, but have you read the book? The book is great. The book is great. What else is on here? Oh, I, I do read some fantasy. I don't think I mentioned fantasy, but I do read fantasy. More often than not, it's like um, magical realism, but I do love Erin Morgenstern, The Night Circus. Really great, really world-building fantasy. She writes beautifully. It's like it completely leaps off the page. She wrote another book called The Starless Sea, which I actually prefer over this one, but I just don't have a copy of that one. The Starless Sea and The Night Circus, if you're into fantasy, Erin Morgenstern, for sure. Also, I have a cat who is walking around behind there who might make an appearance at some point. Get out of there. Get out of there. I'm making a movie. Um, okay. Now, I want to know in the comments, does anybody else have a book that has been on your shelf for decades? Maybe you've donated it and then you've bought another copy of it. It's like an aspirational read to you. Does anybody, raise your hand. Does anybody else? I do. Do you want to know what that book is? The Bell Jar. I want so badly to read and like The Bell Jar ever since I became obsessed with Julia Stiles' character, Kat Stratford, and 10 Things I Hate About You in 1999 or whenever that was. And she was reading The Bell Jar. I was like, The Bell Jar, that's it. I just, I can't ever actually read it. This is probably the fifth version of this that I've owned. You can see it's from the thrift store every time I, and I donate it and I'll get a new copy. I just, one day, one day I will read The Bell Jar. Oh my God. If you've been around the store, you've seen my shelf talker. Or maybe you've heard me talk about the dead romantics. This is my favorite romance book of the entire last year. I absolutely adored this book. It is sure it's a romance. It's about romance, but more than that, it's about family. It's about finding yourself. A little bit about ghosts, uh, about community. It is a extremely well-rounded story that I recommend to anyone who likes just a good story. Really good story. Check it out. Dead Romantics. I could talk all day long about it. Of course, I have The Great Gatsby. Who doesn't have a copy of The Great Gatsby? Um, <laughs> and then you may be asking yourself, hey, Nikki, why do you only have two Bridgerton books? 
Well, that's because I already read the other six, obviously. I have the final two Bridgerton books, the only two I have not read. I will get to them eventually. Is anybody else excited for the new season of Bridgerton? Come over on Sunday to Gramercy and tell me what you think about Bridgerton. I'll talk to you all day about Bridgerton. Um, Twilight. I do have a copy of the YA epic fantasy classic Twilight. If you saw on social media two months or so ago, me and the booksellers reread Twilight to see what we thought about it 18 years after it was published. And you know what? It is exactly as you remember it. That's all I'll say. Um, as I said, I, I have, so I have two kids, um, which means that I read a lot of things that don't really take a whole lot of brain power, right? I read mysteries, romances, thrillers. Um, since I have two kids, I thought that I would show you guys a couple of their favorite books. So I brought a couple of them, even though they're not technically on my shelf. Um, my kids, favorite books. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Ready? Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? Classic Eric Carle. Jurassic Can't Dance, really great, really fun to read out loud for kids. They love it when you read it out loud. A classic, Elmer, we love Elmer in this house. Um, Pout Pout Fish, mm, Pout Pout Fish, I know, absolutely. And this is one, it's my favorite. So this is I'll Love You Till the Cows Came Home. I recommend this a lot to people in the store. I might've recommended it to you um, for people who are looking for like baby shower gifts or gifts for small kids, but they think the family already has a lot of books and they're not sure what to get them. They don't want to get them the classics, but they want to make sure it's a really solid book. I'll love you till the cows came home. My kids have loved this book since they were born. This is probably the eighth version of this book that I have had. Uh, I have it, obviously I have it memorized, but it's a really cute story just saying like, outlandish things that I will love you until the yaks come back from a jaunt downtown for a grassy snack in a fire truck or a Cadillac. I'll love you till the yaks come back. So really great book. Check it out next time you're in the store. Um, and then what am I reading right now? I am reading right now Percy Jackson. This is the UK version. Um, Daniel, my bookstore friend Daniel, you might have seen us on Sundays together. We're the dream team. Um, this is one of his favorite books ever. And since he read Twilight with us, we all agreed that we would read Percy Jackson with him. So I am reading that one. My cat, cat, stop. We all agree that we would read Percy Jackson with him. I am halfway through. I never read this as a child. Maybe it's better when you read it as an 11 year old. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, and then lastly, I thought I would talk about the books that I'm actually listening to. So. I have small kids, like I mentioned, and sometimes it's a lot easier for me to just listen to books rather than read them while I'm doing the dishes, while I'm, while I'm playing with them outside, while we're in the car, whatever it might be. I listen to a lot of books, like a lot of books. So um, some audiobooks that would be on my bookshelf if they were physical books, like I'm keeping the audio files forever. It is staying in my library on Libro forever. Um, number one, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. You've probably heard me talk about this book in the store. It was my favorite book I read last year. Probably my favorite book I've read in the last three years. It's a fantastic book. Um, it follows two best friends who meet when they're kids and it navigates like 30 years of their friendship. And they make video games together, but you don't need to care about video games at all to like the book. Trust me. Everyone who has recommended this book to 90% of them have loved it, whether they were my age, whether they were 70, whether like literally across the ages, all kinds of people love this book. Um, fantastic book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Uh, another book that I super love that is staying on my Libro FM library shelf is The Unsinkable Greta James. That book is about a female musician She's pretty well off. She's a great musician. Um, her mother was her biggest fan, but she passed away recently. Her father never really understood or supported the fact that she was a career musician. So they have a very strained relationship. And the musician decides to go, Greta James, decides to go on an Alaskan cruise with her dad that her mom had planned to go on with him before she passed away. And on this Alaskan cruise, not only does she kind of navigate through her grief and move forward in her personal life as a musician, as a woman, but she also reconnects with her dad and they really heal together. Multiple points that I just like started crying listening to this book. Fantastic book. Unsinkable Greta James. Uh, okay, one more. 
Mm, the God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. I just finished listening to this maybe like a week and a half ago. And I'm not just saying this because we have an event with Jacqueline Holland on March 23rd, which you should come to if you can. It's going to be great. But The God of Endings was such a good book. So good. Um, if you like Interview with a Vampire, if you like Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, if you like the character depth of The Gentleman in Moscow, if you like Matt Haig's How to Stop Time, it was a great book. We follow one immortal woman through like 200 years of her life from 1830s New York all across the globe to, where did she go? Oh my gosh, she went to Serbia, she went to Egypt, she went to France, France during the German occupation, back to New York. Fantastic story. Like, Base core question, is a mortal life a gift or a curse? That's like the base of it. Fantastic. 10 out of 10, would recommend, will recommend forever. Uh, lastly, what am I listening to right now? So I'm reading Percy Jackson. I'm listening to Pineapple Street. Uh, Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson, I believe. It just came out this past week. And it follows three women who are in a Brooklyn, very well-to-do Brooklyn family. Um, two sisters and then the wife of the sister's brother. Uh, it kind of like has alternate, alternating chapters. That's really good so far. If you like a, like a like a family drama kind of story, like a domestic drama kind of story, it it would probably be perfect for you. Yeah. So that was my bookshelf. That's what I'm reading. That's what I love. Tell me what you love. Do, do you see anything on the shelf that you have already read that you did love? What do we have in common? Is there anything that, you said that I talked about that now you want to check out? Feel free to message us or comment. I'll do my best to answer questions. Um, but yeah, tune in for the next Gramercy bookseller to show you their shelf. It'll probably be a lot more books than this. But <laughs> in the meantime, thank you so much. Many thanks, as we say at Gramercy Books. Grand Merci is French. Many thanks. Many thanks for stopping by. Happy reading.